None of the people who have ever lived on this street or who will ever live on this street have ever had a say in how their lives would be organized. None of them have ever said, for instance, hey, let's move the functions of living away from the functions of working. Let's disintegrate those things. So that when we come home at the end of the day after working with people we don't tend to get to know, let's live among people that we don't tend to get to know. No one ever said, hey, let's make everything bilaterally symmetrical as far as the eye can see, north, south, east, and west, and let's do it to every city west of the Ohio River all the way to the Pacific Ocean. San Diego, Seattle, Portland, St. Louis, Chicago. What effectively happened was the great commons of this land was converted into a commodity. Locating the great commons there in the intersection is just simply to recognize that where our pathways come together, so do our lives. This is the most profound principle of urban design, the intersection. The idea that you enable people to intersect however you can to enable them to communicate, to meet each other, to facilitate events, things that happen. It's about facilitating communication, not just the movement of goods and services, it's about helping people to build relationship. Everything goes on in the piazza, and I suppose you could say conversely that if you don't have a piazza, if your neighborhood doesn't feature even one public square, how much is going to be going on? That principle of build it and they will come, or build it and something will happen, what if it's not there? What if you think you have freedom of assembly and nowhere to assemble? In fact, in the United States, we have fewer outdoor gathering places and indoor gathering places than probably any other country in the history of the world. And also the most acute social isolation and its associated problems of any first world country 